thanks for talking to us today. I, I reckon it was a really big year for you in 2022. Would you say so? Yeah, I think so. You know, we have uh, we kind of officially kicked off in 2020, and then I think it's uh, 2021. We're building momentum, but I think 2022 is uh, we seems a lot of uh, new faces and uh, new people is even outside of BSV, like uh, looking into BSV because of uh, what we have been doing. So, yeah, I'm really proud of uh, what we have been doing, what the team has been doing. Do so you far. think, uh, the, has the growth come from the outreach that we've been doing at BSV, or do you think it's uh, it's come from uh, your declining interest in other blockchains for whatever reason, whether it's like scandals or hacks or uh, diminishing value or what? I think it's mostly for because of a, we are we are pushing out we are reaching out. It's not because if you remember, like you know the all the you know the kind of a implosions of other computing blockchains or you know or yeah. DeFi or centralized exchanges or all these things is happening. I, if I re can remember correctly, I think in the later part of the year or even you know the last quarter or so. Yeah. Out of out of nowhere to me, it's a kind of surprise. I, I think we. You know, we are in this space. We always talk about the demise of other, <laughs> other blockchains, but it seems to be happening faster than, than I expected. We are talking about. I thought we were talking about years and years, but it seems all of a sudden out of nowhere. And then that's why I hear the joke, which is kind of true. You know, for Bitcoin to succeed, we don't have to do anything. We just have to, you know, survive long enough, and then all the other blockchains they just kind of implode without us doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've often wondered about that one too. Like, not not even not even as a joke, but just seriously, you know, do, is that really all we have to do? It's possible. Just wait. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's like, yeah, uh, that's one, you know, one strategy. But another strategy we are always uh, is actively to build things and uh, you know show people you know what what you can do, and then yeah. in that way, if you show people, I think you know if they're like not like uh, ideo ideologues or diehards. Mm -hmm. So I think most people there, they don't care about, you know, which blockchains or, you know, whether it's Bitcoin or not. It's just, if it works, I think most people, they, they're, they're fine with it. Yeah, and we got to do the outreach too because we have to show people that there is an alternative and that it's not like everything else because otherwise, if they collapse, we get dragged down with it as well. And that's not really optimal. Yeah, pretty much. But it's like, you know, always people talk about dot com bubble. So yeah. if you remember like all the I remember. you know, pet foods and uh, web van and stuff they they went down, but also all the good ones, you know, Priceline, Google, Amazon. So mm -hmm. they also took a hit. They did, they did. So in a sense that's that's almost unavoidable because now it's everybody's you know, nobody I've not heard about uh, people outside of Bitcoin space, you know, differentiate between Bitcoin and all other blockchains, they, they kind of group it in the same thing with called uh, crypto and now maybe called Web3, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That is true. It, it kind of, um, I, I get disillusioned whenever I see the price charts and I see the, you know, the decoupling, the, the line graph. It's, no, it's, they don't decouple. It's just, they, they, they're all like just yeah. moving in tandem as though people just buy and sell their, you know, their whole 100 coin portfolio all at once. And there's no other factor that determines the price at all. It's just, it's just like mood at the time. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk about you. Um, what would you say were your absolute highlights of 2022? Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, I kind of divide into three major things we've been doing last year. I think yeah. for the first half of the year, you know, before we went to the you know, I haven't been to the CoinGate conference for a while, so it's good Me to either. finally do meet you and everybody else in Dubai. So before mm -hmm. that, we are doing, a, you know, if that's a common theme for all the things we have been doing, is trying to show, hey, you don't need other blockchains. You know, you don't need to have to have breaking changes for Bitcoin. You know, you can do all the things you wanted to do on the original Bitcoin. For example, right? We, in Dubai, I showed, you know, how do you do all the, you know, the most prominent features of BTC, you know, they brag about, for example, you know, uh, graph root, you know, <clears throat> or say, you know, uh, D 
different signature mechanism or you have uh, you know all the things they have been talking about you know that they take years and also take hundreds of people and uh, many break changes and then you can actually implement it if you know the so-called bitcoin smart contract you know which is what we've been focused on you can actually code this in a contract you don't have to either launch a blockchain or change the have breaking changes so that's a common thing we also talk about how do you even run you know for example you know monero or zcash or you know bch or and lastly we have also run we have launched the, the transpiler which is also the highlight on, in the conference you know you Certainly can even was. simulate everything that yeah, the ethereum can actually do you can we also have tools not only in theory we also have the other tools to help you to if you ever want to migrate and you want to compare this to you can actually you know run the code uh, yourself and see you know in you know real eyes to see what's the difference and uh, the benefits of using the bitcoin protocol so that's i would say kind of like a phase one what we've been doing so after you know dubai and uh, we have been focusing this i think it's pretty cool t technology which is also very good fit for the bitcoin system called mm -hmm. the zero knowledge proof yes because it can you can do, kind of do two things it's kind of mind blow blowing if you ask me because it's kind of almost like a math mat mathematical magic box so you, you you can prove some things too you mm -hmm. know without telling me that the thing exactly so for example right if you can you can prove me you know uh, a private key corresponding to this big to, to this bitcoin public key but you are not telling me the public key right so usually you can do it with a signature that's the most intuitive you know way to explain to people you know what what is the zero knowledge thing you, yeah. you're not you're telling me you have possession of the private key without giving me right, the private key because I, you don't want to give me your private key because otherwise i can steal whatever coins you have there right so that's one thing and then opens a new almost entire new categories of new applications that's previously impossible in bitcoin because you know we talk about the blockchain one you know the biggest feature compared to other previous technologies you know is transparent right? it's public you know if you upload anything to the bitcoin blockchain everybody else can see it yeah so that means it's not very great if you you know you know we talk about we love it transparently but you don't want to also you don't want to put everything out there right that's true. And then the dilemma is, is if you do it, if you put it on the blockchain, everybody can see. It. But if you want to keep it private, and then miners, the Bitcoin network cannot, you know, validate the things. Then how do you make sure the rules are followed? And then this is zero knowledge is only technology I can know. Somehow you can, you can put a commitment there, you can put a hash there, but you can also prove, hey, all the rules are, are being followed. For example, previously you can only play chess, right? Because I know your move, you know my move. Mm -hmm. but now you can finally play poker yeah. because you know i don't know about you when i play poker i don't want to show you know all my cards i have to my opponents you know especially if we're playing if there's money involved right it's funny because the whole the whole idea of zero knowledge proof is uh is kind of alien to most normal people like and until they really think about it or until it's explained to them you know they they wouldn't have considered that it's not possible before like you wouldn't imagine that Battleship or poker is a more sophisticated game than chess from a, you know, from a knowledge perspective, but it, it kind of is. Yeah. Because, you know, usually, uh, you know, especially in the past few years, more and more people are moving their activity online. Right. Yeah. So all of this issue is not an issue, right? If you are like a play, you know, offline, you know, you are on the same table in the same room, right? I can make sure you don't see my cars. And you don't see my where my my fleet are right in battleship, yeah. right? Which is very easy to do in in a physical world. But now as more and more people trans transfer all uh, doing more and more activity online, mm -hmm. and then it's 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 kind of hard, right? To just make sure you know almost like you are want to simulate the physical world somehow digitally. It's almost uh, all, uh, another theme, right? All all kinds of games, right? Most people. I'm not a gamer myself, but. Uh, all the biggest games, you know, I can think of, right? You know, the World of Warcraft or Civilization, you know, all these kind of games have some kind of, uh, you know, hidden information. Right? You don't want to, 
that's a far fun part of it. You don't know everything all the time, right? Because yeah. otherwise it's not as fun, right? It's like a real world, right? Mm -hmm. We're all in our local environment. We don't know everything. Yeah, some people kind of find that that's scary, but I think that's what uh, makes it exciting, right? If you know everything all the time, you're down 10 years in the future. I think it is probably less fun. Yeah. And of course, uh, all of these things are already available to play online or on computers before we had the internet. Uh, yeah, I do mm -hmm. remember that time. But um, the the challenge is getting it to run on a transparent blockchain where people can, you know, in theory, see every move as transactions. You don't want that happening. So you got to keep it secret somehow while still publishing the moves on the blockchain so it's verifiable. Yes. And uh, there are a lot of yeah, I'm I'm very uh, bullish on the on games on blockchain because oh, yeah. that's one of the the areas. Usually, you know, if there's any new technology coming, you know, games mm -hmm. usually is, you know, one of the if not the number one, you know, field that has some kind of like a killer app, right? If you yeah. remember when you first have, you know, mobile phone, I kind of remember when we first have iPhone and Android. I think most people are not trying to oh I'm going to do banking on it, right? So it's most you have play Angry Birds. You have all kinds of, uh, you know, you could say <laughs> some people find it's very fun game, addictive. You know, they just I loved Angry Birds. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's very, uh, you know, adaptive to new technology because, you know, wine is a good, very good proof of concept. And also, yeah, I would say the stakes is a little bit low because I don't want to, you know, that's why I, I kind of feel what other blockchains kind of doing is the, almost the reverse, right? I don't want to put my life, life saving in some kind of like a DeFi. Yeah. before you can even make sure my games that's good right so it's almost uh, the opposite always so Yo, the uh, games and you know you know billions of people play games and then if you put put it on blockchain you know there are quite a few benefits right one is you know you you talk about you know all the games that's uh pre bitcoin right you mm -hmm. trust pretty much all the companies right to do it i think most sometimes it's very it, it's fine but a lot of other again, you don't want to them to rock pull you, right? If you remember, you know Vitalik, you know one of the official reason why he gave gave he gave right to why he launched Bitcoin. Uh, no, sorry, Ethereum. Ethereum is because he was playing. Uh, I think it's the World of Warcraft or something, and then the company somehow changed some rules, and then he he lost some uh, weapons or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he, you know, you don't want to if you don't want that happen again. Because if you are relying on some trusted third party, they can always change the rules, right? But yeah. then if you put on blockchain, even the company who is launching the game, they have to follow the rule. It's almost like every game is now it's almost like a protocol. So you can interact with it and then enforced by the miners, you know, by running the smart contract. You don't have to, yeah, you don't have to trust anybody. If you mm -hmm. really, the, the company went bankrupt, which every company does sometimes, you know, to, to, to uh, maybe to the audience surprise, hmm. no companies, you know, survives forever. But then the game can really live on chain, right? That's I think, you know, if, if some people call it metaverse, that's that's the only way I can think of, you know, metaverse, right? If you're playing, if you put all your, you know, social life or economic life or even games, in some so-called uh, metaverse, you don't want to run it on, you know, Facebook server or. or you know, or what, whoever's server, because they may go go out. You don't want to lose everything, right? So, and uh, Bitcoin is a, a blockchain is the only way I can think of. You can actually have the metaverse. Nobody yeah. can control, and then it it's not uh, dependent on certain central entity to make all the rules. You know, even if I hated everything else about Bitcoin, I would stay in Bitcoin for that reason alone. I I do not want to live my life on the Facebook metaverse. Uh huh. Yeah, or, that's what uh, Zuckerberg has been trying to to pull you. You know. Yeah. And they they also trying to issue their own coins. So, so far it's not going too great. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, everyone just hates Facebook these days. Like, no, nobody, even even Gen Xers and Boomers, don't think Facebook is cool anymore. Okay, maybe maybe some Boomers do, but you know, uh -huh. everyone else. Yeah, is that's just another. Place. You talk about. <laughs> You know, the, even the boomers, they are not joining because yeah. you, if you remember, you know, one of the biggest surprises in 2020, I think it took a lot of people back there is Elon Musk, he took over Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people, 
especially on the political left, they're trying to say, hey, we need to find an alternative. But <laughs> nobody I have heard of is trying to say, hey, let's go instead, join Facebook instead. They're going to even join some like uh, very primitive, you know, social network instead. They're not joining the biggest. Yeah. So that says a lot, you know. They, they were rather typing, go back to the 90s, but <laughs> so not, not willing to join Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, it's, it's like they, they decided to become the everything app, you know, like, just a few minutes after the point where everyone decided they didn't want to be on Facebook anymore. You know, like they, they probably had their heyday about five years ago, you know, eight years ago or something. And they, they could have done it a lot easier back then, but uh, they had to wait until they just, their popularity had gone over the peak and was on the decline. And then, then they're like, yeah, we're going to do metaverse, but mm -hmm. did quite work out. Um, Going back to ZKP's uh, Zero Knowledge Proofs, I wanted to mention that you did the first Zero Knowledge Hackathon. Yes. Uh, last month, yes. back in December. Um, for me, that was probably one of my script highlights of the year because it was a, okay. uh, it was a good mm -hmm. event. Um, what to, Were you impressed by the talent that was on show there? Yeah, pretty good. I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it's when I first, you know, to be honest, when I first launched this thing, you know, I tried to, uh, work with Bitcoin Association and say, hey, let's put some resources and then see if anybody is coming to play with us. You know, mm -hmm. it's like uh, now you set up all the playground, you get all the toys, you got all the building blocks, Lego blocks. But then the question is where the developers come, right? Because I'm a little bit even like, you know, before uh, I launch it, I'm like even a little bit of a hesitant, like, hey, am I, what if I launch this thing and uh, spend so much time and uh, bring a lot of people from Bitcoin Association. What if like, you know, you got the party, you got the venue, but nobody shows up, that would be like awkward, right? And then <laughs> even for naysayers, right? For BDC yeah. people or Ethereum, they will even laugh at us. But then, hey, you know, it's not like uh, we are the most popular party in the first place to begin with. So what's not much to lose, right? So why not mm -hmm. just go ahead? So yeah, it turns out is, yeah, it went, uh, I think it's a much better than what I expected because if, uh, you know, we, we haven't reached the stage of Ethereum, which they have uh, probably have hundreds of submissions and we have tens of submissions. I think mm -hmm. for the first one is, is pretty good. And out of all of them, we have the 10 finalists, you know, which is, you can watch on our, you know, on the dev post, which is the website that hosts in the, the hackathon. Yeah. Top good is all pretty solid. And then and even one, one time I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I make the rules too, too strict. You know, we were cho only choosing three winners, you know, because for me, it's like all the time that's pretty, it, you got to spend quite significant time and uh, efforts to make, make uh, each of them work. I would even almost, uh, hey, instead of three, why not just 10, you know, everybody wins, but then yeah. the rules and rules is already published up there. So. I kind of have uh, some difficulty to choose which are the best one, but eventually, you know, because we have, uh, and also let's talk about the judges. It's mm -hmm. all pretty much like a all-star, you know, we have, uh, yeah. of course, Dr. Craig Wright, but I also have, uh, you know, this professor from, he used to be at the uh, University of College of London. He's pretty much like, uh, he's pretty much like a Satoshi, but in the zero knowledge space, mm -hmm. everybody knows him because mm -hmm. He's one of the first people, you know, who get uh, zero knowledge to do practical level because zero knowledge has been around, you know, since the eighties, but then, you know, it's just uh, some theoretical construct, but then he, he made a lot of significant improvements. So we should kind of finally make it uh, practical. You know, you can write on the blockchain, you can even compute it on your personal computer instead of running some super com computers for five years or something. Right. So he's, uh, he's, uh, Hans Gross mm -hmm. and even the, the zero knowledge plug we are using is named after him. It's called Gross 16. So yeah, you talk about Gross 16, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of glad we threw some, uh, great people at Bitcoin Association who happened to be his doctor student. So, you know, he reached out to Jared, so mm -hmm. which, uh, give a shout out. He, he happens to another professor. And he said, Hey, why not? I, I just invite him. And, uh, he kind of agrees. I think that's give us a lot of, uh, 
I would say, you know, either reputation or legitimacy outside of the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin SV space. What does he one, think of BSV? Of our, yeah, people, even they don't, you know, some people for whatever reasons, they don't like us, but if they, mm. they look at the, this professor, he may, he's legit, legit. He's, you cannot be more famous than him in the zero knowledge landscape. So, which I'm, yeah, I'm super glad he, he, he made out to be one of the judge. Did you ask him what he thinks of BSV or does he have no opinion on that kind of thing? Uh, you know, I, I didn't ask. I, I just like, I want to, to be, I, okay, here's the thing. I don't want to scare him away. You know, he already agreed. I don't want to, you know, to, to put, put him uh, under two pressure. Maybe next time I invite him, I can talk about, uh, maybe he's already in London. So we, we just invite him to the conference, but, uh, we are just talking over emails. I, I just want to be make sure if he agrees, I don't want to to get too much out of him for the first time. I know that feeling. To, to be to be safe. Yeah, absolutely. Because you, you you heard about the previous speakers, right? They some some of them, you know, Tim Draper and some other people. Mm -hmm. They the first agreed. Oh, let's go to the Bitcoin SV conference. But then, you know, the bit of my comics over. They always troll him on Twitter or something. You know, yeah. so they just give up. So. Yeah, they're trying to use the heckler's veto on BSV. Is it anyone who's associated with it who's not already in BSV just gets, you know, dogpiled on Twitter? Mm -hmm. So, that yeah, that's why, uh, yeah, I'm super grateful. He's, he kind of stayed around. And then yeah. he also uh, helped us to find out what are the, the top three out of the 10. Mm -hmm. So we have six judges. We have people from Ancient Bitcoin Association and also the Craig and uh, Professor Gross. So eventually we made, you know, it's kind of hard to decide the top three, but we all give us our best votes. And then the top three is uh, is going to win the 45,000 US dollars. So it's not bad. So <laughs> I congratulations and uh, I, I, I encourage everybody who's listening, if you're a developer, we are Almost, I think we're going to host this annually, if not more often. So stay tuned if you want to show off your skills and, uh, you know, also make a uh, quick box. So, you know, that's, uh, that's one, you know, people saying, Hey, you know, if you get rich in crypto, mm, you know, other absolutely. than pumping coins, you can also by showing proof of work, you can also make real bucks. Well, it's one of those fields that's so so new that if you join in now, you know, you're kind of on the same learning curve as most of the other people who are in it as well. And you've got that opportunity to get in, you know, at the very early stages, be a pioneer. You know, yes, yes. Within... It's like, uh, you know, Steve Jobs just launched the iPhone and then you are one of the first developers to to code, uh, you know, object, object yeah. C objective C on iOS. I mean, it's still, yeah, that's what I'm kind of going. If we, if we are talking about uh, 2023, but before I talk about that, the next thing I want to give the last thing, you know, we talk about, you know, the phase one, we are talking most to show people, Hey, actually you can, you can do everything other blockchains can do on Bitcoin and they can do it better without yeah. changing the protocol. And the part two, we just talked about the zero knowledge part and, uh, which concluded with, uh, you know, the first ever Bitcoin zero knowledge hackathon, which attract quite a few talents. And the, the third thing, you know, we, I think it's almost like just a little bit about the one month ago, we talked, we launched this thing called script type TS. So mm -hmm. TS for people who not heard about it's called TypeScript. So if you think about, uh, people usually heard about JavaScript, right? So TypeScript is almost like a, you can almost think of as a cousin of JavaScript. Usually this thing is very similar, but it's uh, make some uh, improvement over the, the vanilla JavaScript. And right. the good thing about JavaScript is pretty much everybody, every developer knows it, or uh, even non-developer, you probably heard about it. Even so, I know some JavaScript. So it's like pretty much the, the, the most popular language, you know, mm -hmm. and also the, is the language most people, you know, learn when they first started programming. Yeah. You know, we all love about the ASCript, you know, but the fact is it's still like a niche language, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's, it's still new. That's a, that's a problem. 
the for language, right? It's like a natural language. It doesn't matter how how good you think the language is, but if not many people are speaking of it, it's not great, right? So, for example, if you are if you want to build on some kind of contract based uh, games, right, on using script, I mean, you can learn it, but also, first of all, it's kind of a you 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 would take some time to learn because it's something new and all the tools and the language, the syntax, you have to learn it from scratch. And also, if you if you want to have more people to help you to develop this project, then it's hard, right? You can probably, you know, don't about don't know about Tokyo, but even in you know in the Bay Area, which like have hundreds of thousands of developers, but I, it's usually it's just a handful of people who was very familiar with S script, right? So it's also just it basically creates office, a lot right? of barriers for people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you came so, up with the the transpiler. I mean, that was designed to make it easier to just code in another language and switch it over to S script. Yes. So there, I think in the in the official launch article, I also have this kind of like a diagram showing, you know, you know, Solidity is uh, more famous. Mm-hmm. But even talk about Solidity, we only talk about tens of thousands of people. Yeah, that's true. You know, if in the global sense, it's still very niche, right? And then you talk about JavaScript, or TypeScript. That's like around is uh, tens of millions of developers. So yeah. it's, it's like orders, many orders of magnitude. I think that's why we decided to, hey, you know, script is good, but can we have something even better? So mm. that's why we have the script TS. So basically it's uh, like a wrapper. You can think about it as, uh, you know, script is on top of, built on top of the Bitcoin script, right? And then you yeah. think about the script TS is another layer abstraction on top of script. So you can code in a TypeScript, JavaScript, like a syntax. You don't have to know any, know any new language. You don't have to learn any new tools. You can you all use the familiar workflow and all the tools, IDEs, so-called, you know, you can use VS Code, you can use the package managers, everything. Tens of millions of people already know. So that's, I think that's what we have been focusing on the, in the last uh, month or so to make it uh, you know as stable and as mature and uh, as possible and then put more many libraries we have been doing before mm-hmm. and we have been also you know do a we have done a few surveys i mean it's probably not as rigorous as uh, some like professional p- polling companies because it's on twitter or on slack but most people yeah when they have a choice they prefer to program a bitcoin smart contract in, in typescript or javascript that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, are you getting, what, what level of interest are you getting from people outside the Bitcoin world or even outside the blockchain world? Is there, um, do people still contact you all the time and say, Hey, I just heard about you. Tell me more about this S script thing. Yeah. It's, uh, I think, you know, uh, you know, for me, I would, I would just look at the numbers, right? So for, yeah. for the Slack channel, we, when we first created it, a couple of years back, it was like just me. So right now, I think today I check is like, uh, uh, let me check the latest now. Yeah, it's uh, 458 as we wow. speak. So you, you talk about, and most of them, I think it's uh, developers. I wouldn't say all, but most of them developers. We got people almost join this daily. So, you know, it's not, uh, I would call it a mainstream yet, but it's, I think it's going uh, exponentially faster, growing because at the big, Beginning, maybe no people joining a month, a month, and maybe several people joining a quarter. But now it's almost like a daily. We have new people coming, and it's and many of them, you know, I've, you know, you have been in this space since forever. I've been here hmm. since yes. forever. So most of developers, I used to know them personally, but most for now, the, the opposite is true. Most people, I don't, I don't know where they come from, and uh, oh, uh, oh, a lot of people saying, oh, they read the. Uh, our official blog articles, mm-hmm. you know, we try to reach out there to publish on, you know, Medium, also CoinGeek, and also I always push them on LinkedIn. Somehow it's, uh, yeah, it seems getting a lot of uh, attention, especially, yeah. you know, even outside of Bitcoin, because people say, hey, oh, I'm like, usually they're like quite shocked. I, I, I want to have that kind of a effect. That's what we desire, right? Because, you know, it's like, you are looking at oh people say oh bitcoin is like a very primitive technology you cannot do that you can do mm-hmm. this and then i do the zero knowledge which is the most complex 
contract out there on any other blockchains. So I, we just did that, and then people think, oh, this is very interesting. It seems it's not uh, the what the crypto influencers been telling me. Somehow I have to, if they're open minded, uh, they they want to check in. Once they check the, then it's pretty much like a rabbit hole. It's the uh, yeah, they're not you're not going back. I think that's usually one when you can find out. Okay, you're kind of on in the right track because usually, if it's a one way street, usually there's something going on there. You know, if uh, people are leaving Bitcoin to go to somewhere else, you know, which happens, but it's much at a much greater greater rate. I find people, the the influx of inbound coming. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're definitely in the right place for it over there too, over in uh, Silicon Valley. You know, mm -hmm. I know officially we hate Silicon Valley, the concept, but as a place, uh -huh. you know, it's a, it's still a hive of activity. There's a lot of talent there. Um, do you yes. do you sort of do much face to face socializing with other developers there, or is it mainly online? I think for now, most most mostly online because even for people here, like they've been working from home since uh, the. 2020 and a lot of many people have re even returned to office. This is probably the lowest rate of, you know, uh, office occupancy right now. Even you go to really? the downtown, even in the workday, some, sometimes you don't even see many people. And if you mm. drag them back to the office, they try to quit. So we'll see what uh, Twitter does. <laughs> but uh, I think it's more and more people now they are willing to come back. So mostly on, on, online. And uh, it's also more effective, right? Because if I just push this public publish button, you know, you can see it everywhere. And also do a few uh, offline events. We have a few meet, a few meetups because it's like in Tokyo. We also have a few Bitcoin people here. We a few. just meet, yeah, mm -hmm. meet uh, regularly. And also there's some, you know, there's a, even a guy, he works at uh, PayPal. He, he works on the, in the Venmo team, actually. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, he's into the big guy, but he's also working behind the enemy, enemy lines, I would say. Oh, so he yeah. also, that's been Bitcoin uh, right from me, the start. He invited me to give a few talks at the, the PayPal, you know, mm -hmm. also remotely. So that's why I'm trying to repeal all the people, you know, <laughs> everywhere, a any chance I got. Excellent. Well, I hope you can continue red pilling people well into 2023. Um, you always sound like you're a lot more optimistic than I am, which is great. I, I'm always optimistic uh -huh. about Bitcoin. Um, yeah, well, I think we covered everything. Did you, um, was there anything else you're going to do in 2023 that you wanted to talk about or is that pretty much it? Oh, the, I just look at the, we just finished the, I think looking back, you know, it's kind of like a just past the new year. So we look at the yeah. 2022 mm -hmm. and then the 2023, well, I haven't even started yet. Basically oh. you can think about is much bigger. I think it's a, mm -hmm. I call it a much bigger vision, but it also involves much, much more work. And uh, I would say time because it's probably not like a, I can release something next month, but it's definitely something we can launch hopefully by the next uh, big conference in London. Mm -hmm. So we want to have some kind of like a prototype or even some trials. So basically the idea is, you know, for the previous couple of years, we have been focusing on the contract part, but only on the contract part. But if you want to build some applications, right? Application, the smart contract is just one part, right? It's like you're building these games and then you only handle the data database part, right? I mean, this is good, right? Because nobody handled this before. We should now, after we have S-Group-TS, I'm mm -hmm. very confident this is the most, the most, uh, the easiest way to program any smart contract on any blockchains by like magnitudes of orders because most people know JavaScript, okay? They, mm -hmm. even Solidity, right? It's still new and it's quite primitive compared to something like JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So after we have all these building blocks, I think we should, the smart contract part is pretty, pretty solid right now. But uh, still the issue is, hey, uh, you know, I, I, if I want to play, build an app like, uh, you know, zero knowledge based uh, battleship, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you just help me solve the one piece of the puzzle, right? But still, I need to figure out all the other issues. I need to have, oh, how do I send read from the blockchain? How do I send the transactions? Do I have to call Tao if I'm a new, person yeah uh, what wallet i use you know it's all it's just one small piece but it's a critical piece but it's still it's not the full picture 
the idea now we have is instead of having this piece, we offer every piece. We have all the Lego blocks. We are trying to brand it into an even bigger, you know, we, I call it, uh, you know, almost I think about the Amazon Web Service, AWS, but for Bitcoin, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, when you like try to launch a website, right? You don't want to run, get your own servers. You manage, you run your own node, get everything ready. So for us, we just have all the infrastructure for you and all yeah. the tools. So you just come here, you just focus on your business logic. Oh, you want to play Battleship? You just code all the Battleship logic. Everything else, you know, the wallet, the node service, all the uh, broadcasting and all the indexing. And uh, yeah, we handle all of that. You just sign up. You get a API key, and then you're ready to go. So we, the ideal goal is to make it as simple as program any like a web, so-called web two applications. Mm -hmm. By if we reach reach that end, I think we have done a pretty good job. That's amazing. I, how close are you going to get to that in 2023? Yeah, we're, that's that's what I'm saying. It's, uh, Before long, that's, uh, I I put a few hints out there and uh, just say stay tuned. That's why I'm like optimistic about uh, 2023 because you know for the, all the previous years you know even before script, i think people talk about we kind of know right from mm -hmm. theory side from technology legal economic bitcoin is the best in my opinion yeah you know also back up by a lot of facts right what we have been showing but the problem is you know it's it's good to have theory it's like uh, now you have einstein right he just have the you know he E equals MC square, right? Which is mm -hmm. good, right? To something like a nuclear energy that's probably powering your 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 lights right now, right? Nuclear energy. There's still yeah. some gap in between, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want the people just say, "Hey, how do I build a nuclear uh, station?" I say, hey, "Go read the white paper. <laughs> you know, go read the Einstein's original paper on E equals MC square." Yeah. Which is good starting point, right? But but still, you need all the the tools, the infrastructure to help people to build this, you know, giant applications on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's something which I think is the most depressing issue in Bitcoin for, for its go to mainstream, because you want to have all the intermediate, the tools and the infrastructure, so they come here, even they never heard about Bitcoin before, they're like, oh, this, uh, I'm building apps, I don't even, I cannot even tell it's on the blockchain or Bitcoin, the, all the details are being abstracted away. So that's our, that's our job. So more and more people come in here, you know, they build hundreds of applications. That's how I, I see the key lab is going to emerge. It's not going to be kind of like, a, oh, Craig says, oh, this is good idea. Maybe build this. It's, it's, I'm not saying it's, uh, uh, I'm just not convinced that's the, the optimal, the fastest approach, because mm -hmm. that's what I've been saying, right? We want to have more people to come here to experiment with it. I don't think people just, they read the Einstein's original paper, they come, hey, we could build a nuclear bomb on that. that that's probably <laughs> not the, the first. It's just a lot of people saying, oh, this idea, well, let's see, we want to stretch it to see what kind of things we can build upon. So, and then eventually you have uh, nuclear energy, you have lasers, you have all kinds of things coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely one way of looking at it. And um, yeah, you're so right. I mean, you're, you're sort of right at the, the the root of the whole thing, the core, and then everything has to grow out from there. But um, yep, I definitely hope that that can happen in 2023. I, I, never knew, I never really know how to market this idea to anyone. You know, if I'm writing an article about it, how do I make it sound exciting? But um, I guess uh, you, you've got to be talking to the right people. You know, if yeah, you're, uh... yeah, great. Yeah, I, I'm like, this is the, that's why I'm saying I'm super excited about the 2023 because, you know, we kind of handle something, you know, in the previous couple of years, but then this year we're going to even make it much, like 10 times or even 100 is bigger. So more people, I think if uh, we make the, we done our job right, it's going to be hundreds or even if not thousands of people, it should be joined in the next year or two. Yeah, because this is we want to make it most friendly, developer friendly blockchain out there. So well, to, if that's going to every to be like a logo, we want to be, you know, pretty much like a AWS but for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So when you launch uh, your own Netflix or you want to build your own Uber, you don't have to care about all the infrastructure or the tooling. 
we handle everything. You just build your own business logic. I think the the best case will be like people can build a the, from idea to uh, actual working app on top of Bitcoin. They can launch it within a few weeks or even a few months. But yeah. right now, it takes many people many months and has to be very experienced already. So it's super hard. Even mm. the in theory is solid, but it, that's a big gap. That's the gap we're trying to fill in. Yeah, well, I guess the best uh, the best way to get anyone to pay attention to you and use your product or service or whatever is just to to make it as simple and as easy as possible for them to join in from outside. I mean, it's, yes, it's the yeah. same with anything really, like not not just blockchains or coding or anything. It's just wherever the on ramp is easiest. That's uh, that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yeah, that's know, what our focus is. Some people they are focusing on on ramp of uh, fiat money, right? But that's not our. We are just I'm for so us. It's that. always developers, developers, yeah. developers. I'm excited by anything that's not you know just some new way of trading shit coins, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's uh, the good thing is that's what the, every other blockchain is doing. They're always trying to find out new ways to to somehow to trade coins. So it's, it is seriously all I ever see on the others. Yeah, well, that's why I love Bitcoin BSV because we talk about other things, things other than like tr trading trends and prices and that kind of thing. Because I hate that. Mm -hmm. I was excited by it once. No, I'm uh, I'm no longer excited by it. Well, uh, shall we? It's uh, it's getting pretty late for me, and I'm worried that I'm okay. going to start uh, saying nonsensical things if I keep talking. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up um, with I'm going to wrap it up with some uh, some very cheap flattery and say. You are one of those guys who, uh, when I see that you're always coming out with new stuff, I think this is reassuring because I think Bitcoin is still in in very okay. safe hands. You know, there's uh, okay. Thank you. There's always those projects where you think, ah, gee, I, I like this. If if they ever leave, you know, I, I'd be seriously worried about the ecosystem. And uh, you're possibly one of those people in uh, in BSV. Like, mm -hmm. as long as you're coming out with different new things all the time, I always have something interesting to talk about. I always have something interesting to write about and to me that's enough that's a good thing that's great i think that's what i want to you know uh if uh, i want to have one you know wish for the new year it would be yeah. like we we change you know the culture of bitcoin a little bit from all the you know the, the court case the, 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 the politics the you know argument kind of things to have more people to into really into tech to have interesting things going on you know, just not, uh, you know, because for outsiders, they, they eventually they want to look at the tech. So yeah. we want to make the people coming here, oh, we have this culture of, you know, all our developers are friendly, they are building all kinds of things, maybe some of them primitive, but at least they are, they are trying to bring, you know, the technology into mainstream. So yeah. less, less of the arguments, politics side of court case, I wish, and we have more people have tinkering, talk about, you know, building interesting things. Make that's Bitcoin that's tech again. Do your wish. That, that's a uh, that's out there. <laughs> Excellent. That's that is a great note to sign off on. And uh, yep, we'll say that. Let's get back into the technology. Let's make Bitcoin tech again. And mm -hmm. uh, shall we? I hope you have a fantastic twenty twenty three, and I hope everyone else has a fantastic twenty twenty three as well. I will see you around there. Okay. Thank you, John. You have a happy New Year too.